Okay, let's move on to video number six. In this video, we are going to deploy more virtual machines. These are going to be our actual ADFS servers. And if we take a look at the diagram we have here, our ADFS servers are right here. And we can see that we have two of them, just like we did before. Correction on, we've, we've completed this configuration. A correction on the last slide, though, I've added DS2 because these are DS2 machines. We're also going to add these two virtual machines to an availability set. And we're going to configure our load balancer here to direct traffic both directions. Okay, so let's flip over to our console, our, our Azure portal. Here you can see that we have uh, our EDU DC01, EDU DC02 from the last uh, video. So those have been completed. And you can see also that we're starting to get pretty heavy on objects in this deployment. Now, this is one of the reasons that you would deploy a resource group. So you can sort of gather all those resources together and see them in one place. So the first thing we're going to do here is deploy our availability set for ADFS. So this one's going to be simple. It's going to be AV set hyphen ADFS, just using the same naming convention. It's always helpful to use naming conventions that uh, make them easy to recognize, obviously. AV set hyphen ADFS. We're going to make two fault domains and two update domains since we only have two servers. We're going to use our ADFS deployment resource group. And it's going to be deployed to West US2. Okay, now on this uh, deployment, we're going to deploy the ADFS servers using the portal itself. Uh, so we'll go through that exercise. The Domain controllers lended themselves to PowerShell because of that static address, uh, even though uh, there are ways of doing that here. Uh, one of the other things that we wanted to do with the domain controller is set that caching on the disk to none. Uh, so, all right, so I think we're getting pretty good at deploying virtual machines. Let's go ahead and hit new. And maybe our recent items has a virtual machine, but it doesn't, so let's just go to virtual machines, Windows Server 2012 R2. We're going to use Resource Manager again. And the basics for this configuration, the name of this virtual machine is going to be EDU ADFS01. It's going to use a solid state disk. I'm going to provide a username. A complex password. We're going to use ADFS deployment in West US2. Go ahead and click OK there. Now it's asking us to choose the size. We're going to just quickly select DS2, V2. And of course, you can use smaller sizes. I am just building out a, an environment that would probably handle some of our average customer sizes. Uh, you may want to go smaller or larger. Uh, so you have full control of that. I'm also deploying everything to premium storage. You always have the option to deploy to standard storage as well. Uh, so just keep that in mind. This is just an example configuration, but probably a pretty good fit in most place in most cases. So, all right. So this one we're going to put in the ADFS EDU01 storage account. We'll put the second one in the EDU02 storage account. It's going to go to EDU Nets. It's going to go to production. This one's not going to have a public IP address, so we actually have to remove it. Now, in our PowerShell deployment earlier, uh, we didn't add one, so it doesn't get added by default. We're not going to use an NSG here either because we have one that wraps around our subnet. Now, you could also have one around these servers as well, and you'll need to evaluate whether that's something you want in your organization or not. All right, I, I want to show quickly that you can also add extensions. Now, we, in, we deploy some standard extensions like BG Info. But you also have the ability to deploy a number of third-party extensions. So uh, backup solutions, agents for monitoring, 
and then some of the common ones down here, puppet and chef. So just wanted to point that out really quick. I am not going to add any of those. Next option here is to choose an availability set. And certainly we're going to choose the ADFS availability set there for a moment. I didn't think it was going to show up. And we're going to leave monitoring enabled. And we're going to use that same EDU diagnostics storage account for uh, diagnostics. Now click OK there. Finally, we get a summary of all the options that we chose. Let's go ahead and deploy this. And then I'm going to repeat the process for the second VM. And I'll come back in just a moment. OK, so I have gone ahead and also deployed the ADFS02 virtual machine. So we have both of those listed here, the ones we just created with the portal. Uh, one thing I want to point out is that the network interface cards for these are also created. But you'll notice that even though they have the name of the virtual machine, they have these numbers appended to the end, uh, which we have no control of. And in addition, they don't provide the information that we get from our scripted uh, network interfaces. Uh, we can't see what subnet they're in. They're in the prod subnet, but there's no visual uh, indication of that. So that's one of the limitations of using the portal. If we go to our availability set that we created, we'll be able to see that our two virtual machines are in, these, in this availability set, ADFS 0, 1, and 2. And we can also see that the fault domain and update domain for each of these is unique, which guarantees uh, higher availability since uh, network outages, storage outages, uh, and even updates to the host infrastructure will not affect both of these at the same time. So that's always good. Uh, so the next piece that we need to complete is the load balancer. So we have this internal load balancer we created for ADFS. Uh, we configured it with a number of items. So we configured the probes uh, in an earlier video. Uh, we called it our ADFS probe, which is always probing port 443 to make sure that the server is available. If it's not, it has some certain time uh, timeouts that it will use to quit sending requests to a server that's no longer available. We can also see that we have an IP address here that we configured previously. So this load balancer is set to 172.16.1.10. Uh, that's where all the requests from our web application proxy servers will come from. The next thing we need to configure, and we couldn't do this before without our virtual machines, is we actually need to con configure our backend pool. And this is basically the virtual machines that are going to be used for load balancing or that will be load balanced. So I'm going to just call this ADFS pool. We have to add our virtual machines to this newly created pool. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is choose an availability set. Now, the availability set is basically, you know, it's just going to enumerate the availability sets that are currently in our subscription. Uh, and so we will choose the ADFS availability set because we're not going to load balance our domain controller availability set. OK, so here's our ADFS availability set. I'm going to select that. And then I'm going to click on Virtual Machines. And you can see that the EDU uh, DC01 and 2 are grayed out. That's because they're not in this availability set that we just chose. So I'm going to go ahead and create, select both of these in this availability set. And then I'm going to click OK here. And then I'm going to click OK again to create our pool. OK, so it takes just a few minutes for this pool to be created. Uh, once it's created, we can see the details, the virtual machines, the availability set, and that sort of thing. Now, you do have to wait for that to be complete before you move forward. Uh, and now with that complete, we're going to move to load balancing rules. And we're going to add a new load balancing rule, which is basically going to bring together all these objects we've created uh, and provide rules around load balancing. Let's just call this our ADFS LB pool. We're going to use TCP port 443, which is our SSL. Our backend port is going to be 443 as well. You can see that I have my ADFS pool with two virtual machines listed here now. I also have the probe that we created earlier. I can set session per persistence, which basically uh, means that as a client comes through this load balancer, it will remain on 
uh, the same target server in relation to a timeout. So the timeout by default is four minutes. I'm going to leave the rest of this as default. Click OK. This is actually going to create my load balancing rule. Uh, and once this is done, we have basically created all of our ADFS infrastructure servers, the availability set, the VMs, and the internal load balancer. Uh, and with that, um, we can see that that pool is now complete. We're going to move forward with deploying our DMZ virtual machines for web application proxy servers.